34 albums, eight Grammy nominations, and you finally uh, won your first Grammy for yes. Calling Rastafari. Yes. Um, at this stage in your career, is winning an award like that still important to you? Well, of, of course I will say it's important for it's coming from the music industry mm -hmm. and it, it connected to the whole music surrounding and I as a musician, a singer, it's very important. What do you think it was about this, uh, this album in particular that finally made a difference? Well, it, it's a lot of different in terms of uh, lyrics and arrangement and melody and the kind of feedback I would get from the album, a lot of people thinking that this is one of the best Burning Spear album. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't mind about that, for that is how the people who've been supporting Burning Spear feel about the album, so that's a good feeling. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want to back up a little bit here, kind of to, to, to earlier, to the beginning, I guess, of your career, when you entered the recording studio for the first time, um, into Studio One. Did you, have, did you have any idea that you would still be doing this 30 years later? Did you, you think know, you would I, still be making music? I, I think so. And one of the reasons why I think so, when I was getting involved in the business, I was seeing the business on a long-term level. Mm -hmm. And I know when you're going to approach anything on a long-term level, you have a up, lot of ups, up, ups and downs to go through and drop in ruts and stuff like that. So I, I know I would be hanging in it until this time. Yeah, you, you knew you were in it for life. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. <laughs> um, tell me about that, fir that first time in the now legendary Studio One, I mean, how did you get to the point where you could go into the studio and record? What, what had you been doing right before that? Well, before that, I was doing a lot of different things. You know, I was like doing uh, cleaning clothes, laundry mm -hmm. and stuff like that. At, at one point, I was doing a, a little mechanic and uh, at uh, another point, I, I, I wasn't doing anything, <laughs> you know, and I was just thinking music on another time. And after thinking music, I think because the music was within me and it take me a time before I could identify that, that the music was within me. And as soon as I identified that the music was within me, then I started to think how to get the music out. Mm -hmm. And it's like visiting the opposite part of the parish of Centre and when I run into Bob, yeah, that was going to ask yeah, you. I know Bob but, Marley played played a small part you know, in getting you, or maybe a larger part in getting you into. That's how the whole thing gets started, and you know we were talking, discussing about music, the roots, the culture, Rastafari, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, when I've been told about Studio One by Bob Marley, and then and then you just went down there and you you were ready. And I was How did ready. you discover though that feeling that you needed to know that you needed to play music? I mean, you you talk, you've talked about like you you felt it. But yeah, you felt it. You know, no. a true, true musician or a true singer, you, you will feel, you will feel, feel that mm -hmm. when, when the time is right. You can't ignore it, I guess. Yeah, you <laughs> can't. Um, anyone who's followed your career obviously knows that uh, Marcus Garvey has been a focal point and an inspiration to your songwriting throughout your career. Um, what, what, what is it about this man that has kept your attention and your creativity for such a long time so I so think is. I think it's because of what the man was standing up for mm -hmm. and what the man did believe in and the direction the man was heading into and the kind of plan he, he kept you know, and, and wanted to, 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 to exercise a, 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 a amongst people. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the, the, the world could see a, a, a different side of some people. What you was know. the plan? I mean, what, what was the he plan, trying to I, do? I think Marcus Gavin's plan was more like self-reliance and he was trying to set up a, a, a black government, mm -hmm. so therefore things would be a little bit easier for black folks and, and uh, people would have a better direction and a better way of thinking uh, about even uh, thinking about other people mm -hmm. and how to uh, uh, communicate, uh, uh, create a, a business relationship with, with, with other people. It's just so his whole philosophy is about making people stronger, people and, stronger, and smarter, and smarter. How did you discover him? What was? Do you remember the first time you realized that this man I, existed? The first time I discover him is like I think it was a, a, a birthday of his, uh -huh. and uh, I I was a young man, and they doing this public celebration, and I I was at the scene, and they were talking some good things, some nice things about Gavi. That, that was my first time 
getting close to the, 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 the philosophy or the doctrine of Marcus mm -hmm. Garvey, then I start to write a song by the name of Marcus Garvey, you know, a couple, couple years after. Right, right. How does his, his philosophies, how do they tie into Rastafari? Rastafarianism. Well, I, I think Marcus Garvey was one of the first Rasta man mm -hmm. as an African Jamaican coming out of Jamaica. And he liked that Rastafari touch under the order of Naya Bingi and bring that touch out of Jamaica into many, many other countries and many other places. And today, when you say Rasta, it's not like you're talking only Jamaica. Right. But today, Rasta is all over. It's all over the world. Yes. It's very interesting. Um, I, I recently read uh, an article where you said something quite fascinating and it kind of ties into what we were talking about in terms of when you first discovered mm -hmm. that you wanted to be a musician. Um, and you said, I want to be music. And what, what does it mean when you say I want to be music? <laughs> you see, I, I, I want to be music because I am a musician mm -hmm. and there's nothing else I want to be b besides being music. Right. It, is, it just embodies it in your, in your life, it embodies you, your being. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I want to mm -hmm. be music, thinking music, you know, writing lyrics, you know, singing music. <laughs> <laughs> Everything. Eating music, <laughs> sleeping music. You know, so I, I want to be music, you right, know? Right, right. very, oh, it makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense. I think, you, I think you've accomplished that. <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, uh, speaking of, me, of your music, um, y your music has always had very political and social awareness to it. When you began writing songs like Marcus Garvey and Slavery Days, what was the reaction from the reggae community in Jamaica? I mean, because that wasn't necessarily... Well, uh, at that time in Jamaica, uh, the reaction and the feedback wasn't so, 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 so big. Mm -hmm. Our people, it's not like people was listening and trying to find out why do you remember the days of slavery? Mm -hmm. You know, there, there was no such thing like people would run a check and try to find out why. but to what my knowledge increased to, and I could understand a lot of things about what did take place in the days of slavery. Right. So those are the things that really mobilize me and give me that, 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 that push to, to get so deep and write a song like Slavery Days. So, so they weren't used to hearing songs that had that kind of like social no, relevance? No, no, no. Well, what were the songs about back then? I mean, well, were the songs, simpler songs? Yeah, it was more like simpler songs, more like nursery rhyme. Mm -hmm. And when, when the songs start to get a little bit deep with a lot of harder things, social development or, or you know, something based upon political scene, it's like when Bob start to dig in, mm -hmm. You know, for when Bob start to dig in, then Bob start to touch a lot of those points, you know. But based upon uh, points like where I touch like Slavery Days, Marcus Garvey, I was like the first man who really get there, right, you know, right. I I into that kind of park, you know. Do you feel a responsibility as a musician to, to write music that has that kind of social awareness to it? To well, I, I don't know if... Um, if I have that feelings like that kind of responsibility feelings mm. to, to always do that. I, I think what I do is, is the vibes, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's, it's some form of inspiration to a spiritual level, you know, sometimes get to you as a writer or a musician, I, right. you, you will do things, you know. Have, do, do you think your music has changed or has, has, made, has it made people aware? Have people been listening to you for all these years? Yeah, I, I think so. All these people might not come out and say what they should be saying, mm -hmm. but I think so. You feel like you've made an impact. Yeah, I, I think this music get to people and it get to people the right way and the right time and yeah. people create a lot of convenience to accept the music and they don't mind being a part of the music. Right, right, that's very true. Um, what, do, what do you think of, how, how, how do you think the reggae music has changed over the years? Because there's a different, you know, the younger, the younger people, there's a, you can hear a slight change, you know, people like Buju Bantan and, and others in, that are his well, age. Well, I, uh, uh, to my knowledge, I knew that the music would change. Mm -hmm. You know, for, you know, I involved in the music since 1969. And people who were there, even before me, the music been changing since that time, mm -hmm. until this time. You know, now we have new generation, young people thinking different, you know. 
So therefore, everything changed, right. you know, right, right, right. musically and within and around <laughs> the music. So that, that is why we have these young people with this kind of flavor music, where in, this is the kind of music they're into and this is the kind of music they're used to. And then again, this is the kind of music they've been taught about, you know. Right. So most time you have new people listening to the music, but there's no one who to tell them where the music is coming from. So the music is even coming from what they've been listening to today. Right, right, right. Very true. You know, but we, we will always have changes and, and things like these for young people going through their phases, musical phases. Possible couple of years down the street they're gonna end up liking a different music. <laughs> That's true. That's <laughs> very true. <laughs> I've, I've heard you express concerns uh, in other interviews, actually, about uh, how, how, the, how reggae music has evolved. And you, I, I remember reading you saying something about that younger artists perhaps don't have the same priorities as, as, as you do, or even as you did when you were a young man. Do you mm -hmm. still think that's true? I, 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 yes, I, I think it's true. You know, for today within the music business is a is a lot of things, and you got to be strong. Mm -hmm. You know, and when I was get get when I was when I was getting started at that time, things was kind of different from 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 mm -hmm. now. Right. You know, right. for we we were there getting involved in the music, wasn't even thinking about money or anything right. like that. Right. You know, we we could sing and we could play instrument and. That is what we were always thinking about until it takes us a time that something is there. It's more than just singing and, and playing instrument. Right. But today, I, I know certain these youth have that kind of patience, you know, and that willpower uh, with that resistance to really stand up for what they're supposed to be standing up for and try to do the, 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 the right thing musically. So you think that the, the younger people don't, ha don't have the willpower to do that right now? That the, the, what, what do you think is motivating them to, to do that? Well, I think they, they, there's too much distraction mm -hmm. today w within the music business, mm -hmm. especially in the, in the reggae section. Right. You know, distraction, lot, yeah, how? What do you mean? A lot of distraction where instead a kid should take time out and do the right thing musically, mm -hmm. And he, he will try to take a shortcut and, and, mm. and doing the wrong thing. Then right. again, who is me to say he's doing the wrong thing? <laughs> right. Possible that is what he or she want to, to, to do right. musically, right. you know? That and sometimes it's like a, a guy or a man will be selling meat, but him don't eat meat. So meat is what he, he make his money off. Right. So it's like the music. Some singers or some DJ might be saying thing when they know that what they're saying is not right, but that is how they achieve what they have to achieve, right. money-wise. Mm -hmm. Right, they have to take care of themselves. So yeah, they need to do so they, they choose to do. to do that. Yeah, and I guess that's okay. You know? You gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> um, like I mentioned earlier, you've been making music for 30 years now. What, what, can you tell me what you attribute your longevity to? I, I think uh, it's my mind. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to condition my mind and uh, I have to make sure I'm in control of me. And uh, the, the people play a, a, a big role within it too, for the people who've been supporting high over the past year. I think I get a lot of encouragement to continue to do some things yeah. musically, even though there's a time of retirement for everyone. <laughs> but for now I can say the people and my mind, you know, my, my doctrine and my philosophy you know, good encouragement and stuff like that. That's what keep me going. You're not thinking about retiring, are you? Well, I, I'm not thinking about retiring, but re retirement is in the play. Sure, and at some point. Yes, at some point. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can discuss what time right. it's going to be, but right. I know it's in the play. Well, hopefully not too soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not too soon.